Donald Trump, former President Trump, became the first ex-president to be indicted, and he turned himself in for arrest downtown yesterday on those charges connected with making these false statements on business records. Now, previous presidents have faced possible criminal wrongdoing, but never faced charges. Most pr prominently, Richard Nixon. He had Watergate, but he resigned and then was pardoned. However, times certainly have changed. Here to talk to us about how much they've changed is Fairleigh Dickinson political scientist and historian Professor Dan Casino. So welcome, uh, Dan. Good to see you. Good morning. All right, so it is early. It's 17 in the morning. I know history isn't necessarily <laughs> in the top of mind for so many people who are just wiping away their eyes and waking up this morning. But let's talk about this, right? Because you're the one who kind of filled me with this knowledge of Ulysses S. Grant, who was once arrested for speeding on a horse. Right, and that was the only, the only president who was arrested. So how do we get to where we are today? So a lot of this is, number one, about Justice Department policy. So in 1973, the Justice Department was very worried about Spiro Agnew. Spiro Agnew was Nixon's vice president. By 73, people knew that Nixon was in trouble over Watergate and the related scandals. But the problem was his vice president, Spiro Agnew, was pretty brazenly corrupt. He was taking bribes not only when he was before his vice president, but while he was still vice president. Justice Department put together a study saying, all right, what happens if Nixon resigns and Agnew is president and Agnew has done a bunch of crimes? What are we supposed to do about it? And they came to the conclusion in 1973 that the president could not be jailed. That that would be an unconstitutional interference with what the president's supposed to do. And indeed, the president couldn't even be charged with a crime. So, because of this, the FBI reached a deal with Agnew, where he was told he had to resign, and if he resigned, they wouldn't pursue further charges against him. Of course, he was then replaced in the vice presidency, Nixon resigns, Jerry Ford becomes president. But we're still operating under those same set of rules. And Donald Trump really pushed the bounds here about what a president and former president can get away with and what the Justice Department is supposed to do about it. Raised all sorts of very complicated issues about the separation of powers and the role of the Justice Department, who, after all, does yeah. work for the president. But perhaps if President Ford did not uh, it, uh, pardon him so quickly, we might have been not repeating history, actually. Uh, but that being said, so does this Trump indictment, though, just further widen this divide between the left and right, and really the divide within the Republican Party itself? Yeah, this is what's interesting about this. The other big thing that's changed in the last 50 years is that we are now looking at a much more polarized electorate. In 1973, the reason, 1974, the reason Nixon had to resign was not because Democrats didn't like him, it's because Republicans didn't. Republicans started to turn against him and saw him as a drag on the party and saw him as engaging in criminal acts. The difference now, of course, is that we have a dis we have a real dispute between Republicans and Democrats about whether President Trump, former President Trump, has actually engaged in any criminal acts, whether it's appropriate to bring charges against him. And the fact that our parties are now so polarized, there's so little agreement between them, means we can't really have the sort of national coming together, the sort of national agreement that we did when it came to President Nixon, that saying that this is not acceptable. Mm. This is actually much, much closer to what we saw during Iran-Contra, during the Reagan-Bush administration, where the president's partisans don't believe he did anything wrong, mm. even if the law was technically violated. Right, and, 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 and that's, that's the history, and then there's what, is to really look forward, look what we're looking ahead now, right? Because barring this this motion to possibly dismiss, the trial is probably a, close to a year away, which means we're going to be smack dab in the middle of a primary season. So what impact do you really see, Dan, on this having on the former president's ability to campaign while we may be in the middle of this trial, plus other indictments or arraignments that could be still happening? So we have seen that in the short term, this is helping former President Trump in the Republican primary race. Uh, this means because of this indictment, we're all talking about former President Trump, mm. reasonably so. And that means that we're not talking about Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley or anyone else who might be trying to get the Republican nomination for president. And that does help him a lot because the debate is all about him. We don't know what's going to happen in the long term of the primary. Remember, we are still more than a year away yeah. from the election. We've got a lot of time. Lots could happen in that primary. In the general election, it's almost certainly bad. It's hard to imagine as many voters who weren't going to vote for former President Trump, who didn't vote for him in 2020, go, well, now he's under indictment. I think I'm going to give this guy another, another good look. Well, that's just it. I mean, his poll numbers are still going up. So do you think that there's actually anything that could get Trump's base to abandon him? At this point, what we're looking at is not really about Trump's base. We're looking at the leadership within the Republican Party. If tomorrow the leadership in the Republican Party said, you know what, we think former President Trump might have committed crimes, we want to let the justice system do its work, then it's likely a lot of people in the Republican Party, a lot of 
uh, Republicans would follow suit and might actually start to consider possibilities. But until the leadership of the Republican Party does that, and they've been wanting to do that but afraid to do it since 2015, uh, it doesn't seem likely that we'll see his base abandoning him. Yeah. The problem is that base is plenty in Republican primary, but it's not nearly enough to win him a presidential election. Understood. All right. Thank you for taking us way back into the history books to where we are today. Fairly Dickinson, Professor Dan Casino. Appreciate you always. Always.